Hello YouTube, Dan Dandagramma here. We're back home from our anniversary trip to Lake George, New York, and I'm continuing to get ready to go to the Homesteaders of America conference this weekend in Front Royal, Virginia, which means I'm really busy trying to get all my crafts done for my vending table I'm going to have there. So welcome all back home to my kitchen, and we'll be going out into my dining room so you can see the things I'm working on. Uh, if this fails, go on over to um, Facebook Live because sometimes for whatever reason, YouTube Live doesn't work and I have to go over to Facebook Live. But so far, I think it's so good. I'll feel a little better when I see some comments come up knowing that I'm getting through. <clears throat> it says there are four people here already. Yeah, and one like. Whoever made the like, thank you. Hi, Darlene. Okay, there's a comment. Thank you for commenting. Okay, it's working right now. It looks good to me. It isn't buffering as far as I can tell. <laughs> Let's hope it continues. Um, I'm here in my kitchen. I'm going to take you out into the dining room where my mess is, where I'm working on my crafts, and show you what I'm doing there. So, I'll turn the camera around and we'll go. Did I lie? <laughs> yeah, I have I have a big mess out here. So yeah, I didn't lie. This is my dining room table. If you watch my channel, you've seen it looking wonderful and you've seen it looking a mess. And right now, it's a mess. Down on the end, my husband and my daughter have done another puzzle. There's our anniversary cards my husband gave one another when we were up in Lake George. So we brought those home with us to keep. And here you see Remnants of me making mittens and slippers and I'm making ponchos here and here and I just did a couple of aprons. So I've been busy, busy, busy. I got some cheater aprons going and I'm going to explain that to you. Help deer. I don't know what that means, suburban. Let me go backwards. Hi there. Help deer. I don't know what that means. Rebecca. All right, I'm going to tell you about these aprons here because these I did not make, but I'll show you what I'm doing. I found a really good deal on some cotton twill. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is cotton twill, simple aprons. But the problem with them was the strings were kind of cheesy and short. They're not, they wouldn't fit somebody like me and they probably wouldn't even fit, you know, a, an average person well with the strings and this one as well. So what I did was, let me see if you're seeing that. Yeah, what I did was I took the, the body of the apron and left it as is and then I added my own flounce, my own ruffle and I cut new strings, new uh, apron ties and made them nice and doubled them over and sewed them up and attached them and the same with the uh, neckties. So the strings that were here, they're still there, but they're inside this tie to even reinforce it more. But of course, those ties ended about here, and these are nice long ties. So this way, I'll be able to give the folks who come to the conference a little better price on aprons because I didn't have to make all this, but it's still pretty. And let me show you the ones I've now, I don't know if I'll get to these. I'm going to have to go in my basement, find some more fabric that matches these. But I got plums. I showed these once before. Apples. Aren't they cute? Limes. Some more floral. This one in like roses and red, kind of a rosy green, pink and green. And more roses with a greenish background. So... I've got these I'm hoping to work on before we, we go to the conference so I can gussy them up and make them extra special. All right, let me check the comments before I show you more. Okay. Hello, Rebecca. Oh, autocorrect. Oh, I understand. I have trouble with autocorrect all the time, sometimes embarrassingly so. 
I would love a poncho again. Love them. I'll show you it close. I might even try one on to show you how, how they uh, look when they're on. All right. Turn it around again. Now, I've got a pair of slippers done. These are extra cushy made with that Bernay blanket yarn. And the Bernay blanket yarn almost feels like velour. It's really cushy and soft. And I made this cuff. This is kind of my pattern. I had a basic pattern I was dealing with, and my sister and I worked on a pattern, and then I lost that. So on the way home from upstate New York, I worked harder on them and figured out how to turn it out. But I didn't write the pattern down. I kind of said, that didn't work. Rip it out. Try something else. Rip it out. Try. So whether or not I can duplicate it again, I will have to try. But um, these are slippers i might even put a a little tie around here with a bow you know i'm not sure and i had been working on a black and white one as well so we'll see if that gets done or not now for the ponchos now the one on the brown one is done the gray one over here is almost done but see the fringe on the bottom right here well I ran out of light gray so I still had to buy more light gray so I can put fringe all around this side so I'll try the brown one on and show you how they fit I'll use my camera as a mirror so I know I got it on straight back up here get my fronts and backs together call it my hippie poncho. See? So it's got some pretty intricate uh, patterns in it with the fringe and the trim around the neck. So that's my hippie poncho. And I want to make a denim yarn one for me. So What's this say? Teresa. Oops. I got deleted. I don't know. Wow, it's a miracle. I made it. I have missed so many live chats, you're saying. Love charts. <laughs> Isn't it's no autocorrect? Who I'll tell you. I love your videos in you too. Oh Teresa, thank you. That's so sweet. I love hearing that. It encourages me to keep going. <laughs> so anyway, there's there's the brown one. Brown hippie poncho. And over here, thank you. Let me get you around again. Yes, I do sell them. It takes a while for me to make them though, so I'll let you know when I get more done. All right, over here, I'll show you the pattern pieces to the mittens I work on. All right, this is just a liner. Each pair of mittens has liners in them, fleece liners. Okay, this is one piece. It's the back. And if I have embellishments on the mittens, let me see if you're looking at that. Yeah, if, you, if I have embellishments on the back of the mittens, I applique them on at this stage. When I first cut them out, then I applique on whatever the design is going to be before I make the rest of the mittens and put them together. And... This piece would be the mitten palm top. It would go like this. See with the thumb? And then this piece, whoops, not that. Well, let me just grab any old one here. This piece would be the mitten bottom. So it would go like this, the palm bottom. And then this piece, here is the back so that's how they go together but I can show you better if we go over to the couch because I have my mittens that I'm working on or made over there I can show you what I'm bringing to the conference okay it's set up here All right these bags I got my mitten pieces in and I'll show you 
this is my latest design. It's a maple leaf. And this one, I didn't just make from sweaters. Now, if you don't know, usually I uh, take wool sweaters and I shrink them, wash them and dry them and shrink them to make the weave tighter, more um, waterproof and more uh, water resistant and more fray resistant. And then I cut the pieces out and I design the mittens from different prints and solids. But this material here is actually wool blanket. So I made some from wool blankets. And again, they're all 100% fleece lined. So, and I put some buttons on this one. Hopefully you're getting in the shot there. And there we go. So there's that kind. And now I'll just pull out a bunch and show you the different ones. Okay, I got a... A couple of these and this pair is made from I don't know if you could tell this is like bumpy it's a it's a textured pattern on it this is alpaca this is cashmere these two are cashmere so these are alpaca and cashmere mittens And these are the same alpaca and cashmere and merino. This is merino wool up here. And then I've got oak leaves and uh, acorns with merino or uh, alpaca on this side and some more. I'm live streaming Mandy, but you can walk behind with no problem. Okay, see that's alpaca. This is cashmere. This is the sweater cuff. And there's the, the design with the oak leaf and the acorn. And I have similar ones here. Uh, and I have some that have a kind of a Swiss print, I call it. That I've mixed and matched solids and uh, prints. And here's some with some green and vintage green buttons. Got those. More of the oak leaves, more of the oak leaves. This was from the yoke of a sweater. And I cut it so I could put it on the tips of the mittens. And mixed and match patterns and solids to go together with those. So I'm bringing probably close to 30 pair of mittens with me that I've been working on. Some of them have buttons, some of them have vintage buttons, jewel like jewel tone buttons, some of them have applique. What are you laughing at? Oh, okay. My daughter's up here laughing at her cat. All right, then I've got some blue and gray mixed that are less adorned, no buttons, no no uh, print, but it's got a nice, very soft cable. This is Lamb's Wool Hill, very soft cable knit there. So, got those. And you'll notice I take great pains when I cut out my backs that they match. So when I put my pattern pieces on the fabrics, I have to be very careful to make sure, you know, the stripes line up on each one. So I, I try and make them as symmetric as possible. I've got some that are a little whimsical. This one's got cable hearts on it. And I call this snowfall. It's a seed stitch yarn made from that sweater. Okay. And these, can you see the little bluebird? It's got a little pink belly, so I made up these, mixing and matching the yarns. Okay, so I've got two bags worth here of all kinds of mixed sweaters, 
turned into mittens. Now what I have here are mitten kits and I've mixed and matched pieces of the sweaters like I would if I was making the mittens. Instead of sewing up the mittens, I put them all together in a package. And I'm going to add a liner to it and instructions and then put up a video on how to make them. So if I have time and get them done before the conference, I'd like to sell these at the conference too, mitten kits. And then they can have the instructions and the video and the materials to make a pair of mittens. And it will be less money, of course, than the ones I made up myself. So those are my mittens. And here's my mitten pieces that I've still got to work with. So you got cut off cuffs. You're off to New York? Excuse me, I give my daughter a hug. She's leaving for New York. He's in the bedroom. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. All right, there's, see, this is a pair of cuffs I cut off a sweater, which I will use as cuffs on a mitten. And when I, of course, there's only two cuffs per sweater, so I can only make one pair of mittens with the cuffs, but the bottoms of the sweater has all this trim, so I cut these up and also use them as cuffs. So, all right, back to looking at the comments. Okay, let's see. Those mittens are off the hook. <laughs> oh, Helga has a pair. Hello, Helga. Helga has a pair of my mittens. She won them. Well, actually, we had a traveling craft box go around, and I had put in a pair of my mittens. Helga was an excellent line, and she grabbed my mittens. Hello, Farm and Ma. <laughs> yes, all the Canadians need the mittens. <laughs> your details on your mittens are so lovely. Thank you, Teresa. Teresa, do you say Teresa or Terry? Jody, ma'am. Hello, Sister Jody. Jody, I'm wearing one of your necklaces. My sister Jody sells paparazzi jewelry on the internet live. And every piece of jewelry is $5. And it's all nice stuff. So if you want to check her out, look for Jody Malm on Facebook and sign up for her jewelry. Oh no, blurry video and buffering. If that if I knew that, see mine looks fine. If I knew that, I would have switched over to Facebook Live because sometimes that works better. Oh, blurry. Darn. Okay, Teresa Willia. I'll try to find you so we can meet at HOA. Almost didn't get to go. Oh, dear. And the heart. Oh, my. Wow. A lot of health issues there. We'll be praying. Okay. It's better now. I'm sorry I'm late for the party. Hello, Little Creek. It's clearer now. It's fine now. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I I don't have anything else running. I wouldn't let my husband put the TV on that uses the live stream. Stay on YouTube. Okay. Thank you, Diane. I do have trouble with my internet. I don't have good internet. And, um, yeah, sometimes it just goes south really quick and my face melts off and everything <laughs> stops and everything gets blurry. And then I have to just say, bye, catch you next time. So, all right, did you see my videos when we went to Lake George? My husband and I just celebrated our 50th. We had a wonderful, wonderful time up in Lake George, New York. It is absolutely gorgeous up there. The water is beautiful. It's clear. Uh, it's a big lake. It's 23 miles long and three miles wide at the longest, largest, widest part. And the people who live around it, that's their drinking water. That's how clean it is. I'm sure they treat it, but still, you know, that's their drinking water. And they have steamships that go out. They have a, a, a paddle boat that goes out. They have one with a calliope on it, the steam calliope. That's really fun. I don't have great internet either, but better than what it was at the last place. Yeah, that's a struggle, isn't it? And Rebecca Suburban Hillbilly says, my husband offered to send me to the conference last week. He had enough, oh, lost it. Come back, come back. He had 
enough miles to cover my motel and plane ticket, but I didn't want to go by myself. Oh, that's too bad. He would have loved to see you. I would have loved to see you there, that though. Yeah. So anyway, we were in Lake George. We went out on the big cruise boat they have there. It's it's like a lake cruise, you know. You can't have dinner on it, but we ate off the boat and then got on the boat and took the scenic tour. And then a few days after that, we went out on a fishing boat and did some fishing. Didn't catch much. It wasn't the season for fishing. Had a few nibbles. My husband caught a, a small lake trout, and that was about it. But we had a good time because it was just my husband and I and the captain of this, I don't know, 33-foot fishing boat. We had a good time. And they have nice restaurants up there. We had some good food. A little disappointing for our actual anniversary. We went to a restaurant we thought was going to be great, but it was very disappointing. And it kind of, we thought, oh, no, you know, you only have your 50th anniversary once. And it was such a disappointing meal. And we spent like close to $100. We were splurging, you know, because it was our anniversary. So the next night, my husband said, I'll take you to another restaurant. I want you to have a good meal for our anniversary. So we went to another restaurant, and it was delicious. We had, I had steak and lobster. <laughs> so we have, uh, no, you didn't like the LJ for dinner. No, uh, we didn't. I didn't like the LJ for dinner. We, I was totally disappointed. The salad bar was meh. The... Uh, the first, I had ordered uh, prime rib and broiled scallops. Well, the scallops were so dried out and shrunken up and awful that I sent them back. And they brought me more, and they looked a lot better, but they didn't taste good. And the prime rib was tender, but it, it didn't have much flavor. The mashed potatoes were kind of a gummy mess. Yeah, I, the place was so crowded. I know people love it there, but we just got a bad meal. And, you know, we spent so much money on it that it was very disappointing because it was our 50th anniversary and we wanted it to be special. And I tried not to be too picky, but it just wasn't good. So the next night, I can't remember the name of the next one. It was on the other side of the lake uh, over in, I uh, can't remember the town either. But anyway. We went to another restaurant and that was very good about the same price so we really splurged <laughs> but we had to do it and now we came away feeling really good about it had it was the next night it wasn't on our anniversary but we had a really nice meal and so we came away with that yes the scenery was gorgeous the the mountains come right down to the lake and and the water so clear and the, and the big boats that are on there they're you know like i said steamboats and paddle boats and it's just a really special place. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we were sorry too. Um, we were trying to decide where to go. I have a friend who lived in Queensbury up there and then she just bought a place in Lake George. So I asked her and she gave us a number of places and Log Jam was on, oh, I said it, LJ was on there, but she said, um, it's okay. And then she gave us other places that she said, good, 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 very good. And we're almost going to go to another place. And then we were talking to a waitress at, well, a server at Starbucks. And she lived there. And we said, what's your favorite restaurant? She says, oh, I love the LJ. She said, uh, great, great food. That's where I go. So we said, okay, let's do it. Didn't work out for us. I'm sure other times it's great, but it didn't work out for us. It was very disappointing. That was sweet of him, that is. he He's kind of sentimental, and he wouldn't want to go away and have that feeling that, you know, it was our special anniversary, and the dinner was not good. So he said, let's just bite the bullet, do it. You only get your 50th anniversary once. <laughs> so that was, that was very good. Okay. Hi, Baking Diva. Now, does anyone have any questions? Who all is going to the conference? Um... I saw, who was it? Uh, Teresa was going. Because, now, you say you're going to look for me. I'm going to have a vending table there, and there'll be a big banner saying Bandana Grandma, so you should be able to find me without anything. Little Creek, got to go catch an escape chicken. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck. Almost 30 years for us. Great, Rebecca. 
that's wonderful. I know, ups and downs, right? You hang in there. You know, I'm not saying everybody ha has to hang in there till the end, but I am a firm believer that people give up too soon. So there are some that should hang in there a little longer and uh, give the Lord some room to work on the marriage when there's troubles, even serious troubles. Sometimes he can bring everything around. I know. Okay, Glenda Bills. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Glenda. She gets out every day, little stinker. You got a Houdini chicken, huh? 51 for me and hubby. Wonderful baking diva. That's wonderful. Nobody agrees all the time. Well, no, but there's disagreements and then there's real troubles. So, yeah, I understand. Disagreements. So what? You know, you get over it. But sometimes there's very difficult troubles and then you really need some help to stay together. <clears throat> okay, I think that's it. I'm not going to stay out here rambling. I showed you what I'm bringing to the conference. Uh, oh, I'm also bringing bandana grandma t-shirts and my bandana grandma mugs. I meant to bring those out here to show. Grass is green on the other side. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so, if you're interested in those, I'm going to have a special price on those at the conference. Uh, of course, at the conference, all my items, will, I can sell a little less expensive than I can online because I don't have to ship them. So that makes it easier. I will see you at the HOA. Can't wait. Me too, Teresa. Make sure you introduce yourself. Tell me who you are because I'm going to have trouble putting faces and names together between real names and YouTube names and Facebook names. And sometimes I know a name and I haven't put it to the face yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. Thanks for coming by this morning, and please hit the like button. That helps my channel. Bye. I hope we can watch you there. If I have good Wi-Fi, I'll try to live stream. <laughs>